What are you? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, boys. I'm here now. Brian Sensei Derrick. And the Mojo Dojo. Welcome back, Ninja fans, to the one single only show on the internet that answers your deep burning questions. I'm your host, Ninny the Narwhal. So grab your tinfoil hat, Ninny. <laughs> So even though Gareth has access to each power, including smoke, you can see back then that they were hitting at this of power by having two characters, one clues and one in the nose, recognizing for not being an ordinary scrub, which he obviously isn't. He's an only manifestation, but it's like Gambadon's Sons of Gambadon revived form was. In the end, it's safe to say that he had achieved his grand overarching goal of making sure Lloyd won, but the full impact of his actions had mixed results. And Jago is a balance of nonsensical plot holes and rushed, ill-thought-out narrative choices, most together with the idea of selling toys. So there was be careful now he moves. He was foreshadowed with a cancel plot point in season 2 when he obtained the Overlord's Dark Helmet and gained control over the army made from material mined from the land surrounding his temple. But then they wrote that out because it was before its time. This might lead you to erroneously link him with the Overlord, but that is false. Naturally, the Overlord was jealous of being written out of the initially intended role as the first Ninjutsu Master's only side to become some weird logic free manifestation of evil or whatever. So he tried to put the moves on Lloyd and then Jago as a whole. Thankfully, Dareth was there to support him from behind. Despite being the first Minutes Master's only side, Dareth is in fact not a bad guy and wants what's best for the realm, but he has to go about it carefully. Garmadon was able to come back from being evil and crystallized, and Dareth managed a similar thing. Of course, this doesn't include all his various feats, as proven by his collection of pure gold, 100% real trophies. Every single one of those trophies, every anecdotal statement he has ever made, is in fact true. Dareth has earned all of that and more. Dareth was the meteor that killed the dinosaurs. Get a shot, J.F. Kennedy! Dareth collected all seven Dragon Balls. Dareth was behind the 2007 economic crash. And Dareth may possibly have rabies. In Crystallized, Dareth returned as a lawyer. A very funny, funny reference to the hit TV show, Etting Cold Swole. This is actually a 4D chess manoeuvre on Dareth's part to interact with us, the viewer, in HD live real timing. Now, beta loser theorists pretend it's at face value and compare Dareth to some Swole souls himself. Self, but I'm beyond such plebeian limits. So now, enter stage left. The core evidence I had to base this entire theory on. You see, they're a favorite snack. A puppy, puppy, what? Are the puppy pot stickers his mother used to make for him? We all knew that. However, what if I told you that that was just an acronym standing for blended, obsessing, fried, fried, eating, price, overinflating, tantalizing, sickening, treacle, clicking, clacking, Everest, rest stop? And was in fact part of the scheme Gareth concocted to launder money from a legitimate business to offshore accounts using his Dark Island Temple residence. That legitimate business was Chen's noodle shop. So in this analogy, Chen is walls and wipes, and Dareth is small souls himself. But that's not quite right, is it? Dareth's lawyer reference is actually a prediction reference to Scree Scrog twerking with celebrity presenter Mega Pony fan. And if you look closely at this frame, and then the color palette of it up against this image of Nadakan vs Soto, you come to the stunning realization that they have the exact same resolution of bookmate as well as all the being pirated. It all connects. Everything comes together. Jar Jar is the key to all this. Even further evidence. If you look at this image of Dareth and zoom in, then increase the quality of the image using Google Spreadsheet, you find this triangle. Yes, that's right. Dareth is a member of the Illuminati, alongside Patrick Stewart's Professor X, something or other's Captain Marvel, and Mr. Eugene Krebs himself. That's right. Dareth has been there all along, and will always be there. He's a staple of the Ninjago E series that cannot and will not ever be replaced. A veritable cornerstone of LEGO's brand as a whole, and one that we will most certainly be seeing in the reboot, even if he never enters the stage directly again. Gareth will be there, always, lurking in the shadow, supporting the ninja from the rear, because he is the brown ninja. And that, that is so ninja. Now, all of this doesn't even begin to touch the levels of power Gareth actually possesses by the end of the series. 
getting theorized by Reptitude Ninjago, Ninja Man, Ninja Theory, Theorist Man, X.C.A. M. The Gareth could actually fight a Lloyd equal to the first Ninjutsu Master and come out victorious. But that's just a theory. A Ninjago theory. If you want to hear my theory on how Pixel was secretly a zombie bat, make sure to hit the subscribe button and follow me on TikTok for the next big update that comes to this Tumblr page. Make sure to like the video and share your friends. Goodbye. CMMC X dot C CM X dot CM CM